Alright, I'll start recording. <laughs> okay. So, last week, you guys had some fun, fun conversations. Anybody want to tell me about them? Goodbye, Adder. L. Uh, um, we had breakfast with OST and Nova and basically asked questions about the facility that Adder was going to. Um, <coughs> Nova was for exactly happy about it. <laughs> I think Sit was super happy. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh yeah, he's um, so he's so normal. <laughs> Man's is. Super, super jazzed about it. But yeah, so OST and Nova did their best to sort of answer your questions um, in in a way that was both comfortable for them and uh, fulfilling for you. And ultimately, Soot and Adder decided that Adder going would be better than him staying with goop in him and so they made plans and adder left with ost and nova who offered for fern to come with them as well but fern said no um aya talked to you all and said that she had some friends that she really wanted to visit in torcolone and would like to travel there. You guys all learned that that is, you're going to be going part of the way um, northwest along the road to Santerra and then branching sort of direct west. Um, I said that the wrong direction, southwest and then west. And um, you all said that that was a good idea. You want to go meet Aya's friends? It's going to be a couple, uh, I think, I don't get, believe I gave you a travel time, but it's going to be um, a little over um, a week and a half, probably 10 to 12 days to get there, to your knowledge. And um, did the gal pals have an ice cream date? Am I remembering that yes. correctly? Yes, I okay. did. Gal Pals had a funny little ice cream time. Um, Soot went and spoke with Navi. Um, and I believe we left off with sort of the implication and allowance for later elaboration that everybody went for one last night at Sweetwater before setting out the following morning. Yeah, Soot got smashed, <laughs> regardless of who tried to stop him. <laughs> Uh, Man got trashed. Um, Garbled, your co-workers were all happy to see you. Um, if temporarily. And the atmosphere overall at Sweetwater was good. Anybody who wanted to stop by and see Navi and say anything to Navi would have been able to. I think Victor gave me something that was briefly exchanged, but if there is anything else specific for the evening at Sweetwater, feel free to use this space. Otherwise. I think that's a solid no. All right. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Going once, going twice. All right. Sweetwater was a great time. So make a constitution save. Yippee. A fortitude save. We're playing Pathfinder. For fortitude, yes. Uh, let's see. I'll use my liquid core dice. I've been rolling like shit lately, so let's see how we go. Okay, that was good. Um, fortitude, right? Fortitude. Um, that's a 16. Alright. You're like... a skosh hungover. But not... Horrifically so. You went hard. You knew you were going to be hungover. But you're not, like, dying. Yeah. Any last 
errands or things to run the following morning on Aristus the Third. Or are you all simply heading off? Uh, there is one item that I did want to pick up, but I'm just making sure that I'm quickly not a fool. Noted. No, I am correct in my assumption. Um, Gobble would like to go buy a bow real quick. Mm. All right. Yep. Hell yeah. Can do. Um, of course, Gobble. Uh, someone who's oddly capable with pretty much any weapon. Um, wants to add a bit of range capability. Heck yeah. This is very fair. Uh, aka, if Goop shows up, I'm not going near it. Yeah. <laughs> right, that is um, correct. Alright. Well, what kind of bow are you getting? Uh, the, I need to go back to that list. Because I think the one that I could handle... Correctly. Oh, no, I went too far. That's the exotic. Was the composite plus one. Alright, yep. That is gonna run you 100 GP, it looks like. I believe it's and... 200 for the plus one composite. Alright, that is going to run you 200 because <laughs> I can't read columns. <laughs> <laughs> Teehee! Thank you. Um, yeah. Alright, good. You get yourself a composite longbow, and, uh... I'm also yeah. going to get some arrows to go with that, if it's not obvious. Excellent. I hate making people track ammunition, so... You're going to spend a gold for 20 arrows, and I'm just going to trust you that you're not going to somehow come up with some scam to abuse the infinite arrow glitch um, that's present in the game. I and mean, if there's any... Be yeah. normal about arrows. I <laughs> am. Like, if I get any special arrows, I'll care mm -hmm. particularly more, but... We, we got infinite arrow glitches? We oh, have yeah. infinite arrow glitches in the sense that if you <clears throat> fucking... If you shoot 21 arrows in in gaps between errands, and I know you only bought 20 arrows, I, I could not give a fuck. Um, so the extra uh. arrow had to come from somewhere, which is the infinite arrow glitch. But that is not to be abused, and if it is, I will take away the privilege. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, honestly, I'm probably just going to track it well, because I like tracking things. If you like tracking ammunition, I thoroughly encourage it. I would sooner die than track ammunition because I struggle with tracking spell slots. So it's like I I hate that like I in theory have to track bullets. Ugh. Yeah. Um bullets are one of those cases again where it's like as long as sort of on a semi regular basis, you're like, hey, I'm putting in the materials to make bullets. And I'll be like, epic, sexy. Um, I hated tracking bullets as Susanna, which is why I eventually asked everybody if I could stop, because Susanna shoots, like, six bullets per round, and it's just yeah. disgusting to track, so I, I will not inflict that on you. Like, again, if you are making reasonable effort to be like, I probably need some... <laughs> Uh, speaking of, Victor was, like, totally psyching herself up for a conversation, and then, like, sees Soot, like, put, not Soot, uh, Fern putting his shit on the cart, and, like, not having that conversation now. Oh. Also, Fern gets one hell of kind of, like, kind of an expression, like. Um. Confusion slash derogatory is what I can say. 
flight head tilt. Turns around and does not say anything. Okay. Good Who God, Victor moments. Nobody communicates in this party. Why would we do that? Why would motherfuckers communicate? Um, so, with Garvold's errand done, you all are able to sort of get your cart situation situated. You are able to make plans, talk to Aya about how long she thinks the travel is going to take, which is, according to her, 9 to 12 days. Um, she probably gives you a number closer to 12. Aya is more used to traveling with emergent caravan. You all mm -hmm. can assume it's less than 12. Yeah, she's overshooting it a little. She's overshooting it. But who could blame her? She's a bird. And girl. You all are able to set out on the road. Road time. Road time. Victor's driving again because that's what she does. Victor, do be driving. I will say it's that probably strikes up conversations with people, um, just for his own sake. God bless. He, uh, the, the silence will kill him. <laughs> Keeping it chatty. He, he's so normal. All right. Your first day of travel uh, passes quite smoothly. Um, there's no particular major traffic. Again, you're sort of on the road to Sonterra for the first little bit. And so this is both familiar terrain and uh, well-traveled roads. So there are no major events that would cause you to stop. There's nothing really too dramatic. You do pass a fair few fellow travelers um, here and there. But not... Not anything that gives you pause unless you're feeling particular um, suspicion about travelers on a, on a well-trafficked road. But it is also a road that has plenty of places suitable for making camp in the evening, so you also do not have to make a grand search to try and figure out what all is happening there. At this point, I also assume that you guys have your camping situation relatively nailed down, although Garble, this is your first time camping with these people, so it's a little weird being in a group that's not really in need of an extra pair of hands because they sort of seem to have a routine down, but you are able to chip in and help with a couple things. Yeah, like, Gobble will just insert where necessary. It's like, someone like struggles with one, it's like, no, I, 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 I can help, I can do a thing. Which is so funny. Because you see what looks like Victor struggling with her tent, and the moment you're like, do you want help? She's like, fuck off. Noted. <laughs> and, but she manages to do to it herself, <laughs> and it seems like the, the rest of the group's reactions to this is that this is normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Victor puts up her tent in probably the least intuitive way you've ever seen someone put up a tent, Garbled. Um, she, she is making use of not only both hands, but also her tail. And it seems like this is necessary for her process, which, again, puts up the tent functionally at the end of it. You're not sure why she did it that way, though. 
But hey. We accept things here. That's fine. All right. I will not make anybody set watches for the first little bit of this journey. However, you are welcome to take any time, any, any night for watch conversation. I do not wish to deny you that. It's gal pal's time, I think. Gal pal's time. Victor and Danela. We actually do not have to roleplay it. That's important for me to for, that it is gal pal's time on watch. Excellent. I will re remind me to inform Asterisk of this when they when they arrive. Mm -hmm. The gal pals be gal palin. Anybody else got watch business to get to? Um. Maybe not watch business, but I feel like at some point Soot would just call for matches and just kind of be like, Okay, buddy. I know you're not always with me. Um, if, you, if you're able to do it, maybe try and look after Adder, yeah? All right. That, that's that's about what Sit does. Um, he's he's much quieter than usual. <laughs> the image this has just given me is of is of Sut sending his massive black borzoi to wherever Adder's at, which is a scientific facility, <laughs> and just so, just motherfuckers have to deal with that. But, yeah. Which is very funny. I will neither confirm nor deny whether that's canon, but like it, it's a funny image you've conjured in my brain now. How'd the dog get in here? <laughs> who let, who <laughs> let a Borzoi into this chamber? And it's funny because those two know what matches looks like. <laughs> they do. They do know They'll that. know exactly who's keeping an eye out for him. <laughs> Which, it's an interesting point because so you may be entertaining yourself a little bit with imagining, like, oh yeah. man, if matches showed up while there was some weird dark tapestry bullshit going on, like, Nova and OST would be so annoyed. And maybe that's a little more, maybe that brings you a little bit more joy than you care to yeah. um, admit. And you're just, you're like, oh man, the looks on their faces. You can sort of try and imagine, like, the looks on their faces. You're not sure OST would have a massive facial reaction. Mm -hmm. You can't quite imagine what Nova's face would be like. Um, you can't quite imagine any of Nova's expressions. You know how some people just have those faces that, like, no matter how hard you try, bro, you cannot remember what they look like when they're not yeah. in front of you? Yeah. One of those faces. Damn. But I'm so it's it's <laughs> the Sit's idea used to does that. entertain you. Yeah. He's just like gonna grumble to himself like serves you fucking alright. <laughs> <laughs> These lovely people who have done nothing yeah. but help you. Like Sit knows they didn't goop his man, but also fuck you, you're taking him away from me. <laughs> Goop the man. Alright. He's not rational at the moment. Come back in three to five business days. Fair. Give Everybody give me a spicy boy perception for the evening just to see how things shake out. Sure. One moment. I was in the middle of painting a figure. Okay. Where is my I don't think I have anything to perception. You know, anyway. one day I'll get above a 10 on a perception check in my life. One no. day. Um, so that would be... Alright, I'll put that down. Hold on, roll no, 20 is deciding to be a bastard. Uh, it's a 13, not a 1. It just didn't right. type the 3. No, 
old boy, right? Twenty-four. Are like mediocre. Okay, good. I was like, me when the homies are mediocre at perception at best. <laughs> um, but it's okay. Twenty-four. Um, with a twenty-four, Victor. Even though Galpal's time is occurring, you're definitely like aware of your surroundings. Um, and it's it's a quiet night overall. You do sort of. You're not always happy um, when there are birds circling overhead. Um, it just, the the last time you were on this road, you had some weird wildlife encounters and you're not looking to repeat them. But over the course of the night, the worst you have to do is like scare off some random, random critters that get a little too close to the wagon and just tell them to scram and they run. So it's it's nothing that's actually out of the norm. But you are sort of on alert. Everybody else, you're just kind of getting into the swing of being in travel and keeping watch again, and you don't you don't notice anything out of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. Um, the next uh, few days of travel are largely the same, and indeed, you have gone over this stretch of road before, and I don't particularly feel like making it go through it day by day, step by step. So we're going to move a little bit farther forward, unless you think anything would happen sort of in the intermediate, call it, three days. Um, I feel like Soot would like... There, There is a point in the travel where Soot does like... I, th- I think he'd want to talk a little bit to Garvel, just like... Hmm trying to think how because in my in my head um he's he's trying i don't know if i have it in me to actually do the things that i want at the moment um brain is soup so i don't know so it's, so it's just in general trying to um be cordial i guess <laughs> garbled socialization hours yeah Socialization has occurred, and that is noted. <laughs> I Get feel like socialized. I, I feel like some of the conversation is leaning towards like so asking like what sort of like because we all know that he's the midnight sun at the moment. Like they're <laughs> <laughs> correct. Um, so it's like wondering what sort of story Garvold would want told about that. Like, just in theory, like, what would you want to be known for? That sort of thing. Like, if somebody had to tell a story about you. Basic questions. You... Yeah, totally. What, Basic what questions. Would you want? What legacy do you leave to the world? Um. What would you like for your legacy to be? <laughs> I'm a storyteller. I can make up something for you. Icebreakers. <laughs> well, as as for my story, as me, I don't want anything special. That's not what I'm after. But as the Midnight Sun. They already have such a special legacy, especially where I'm from. Just one of being there for those in need. Sure. Well, if you keep traveling with us, I'm sure we can figure out something a little more entertaining for you. (laughs) Stood said that's boring as shit. Not, fair. not that it's not you know a very interesting uh, storyline and 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 lore that I am not exactly fully known on. Um, just more something for you personally, you know. Hmm. I guess I haven't given much, as it shows, I haven't given much consideration to what Garvold wants. <laughs> And needs. Oh, that's quite sad to hear. But uh, 
<laughs> Let's hope we can figure that out for you, buddy. <laughs> Give him a pat. <laughs> Sut being unintentionally fucking vicious. <laughs> Rest him <laughs> as a treat. Just, just notes. Hmm. I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> Look, uh, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> don't know how to he... feel about this. Affectionate. <laughs> he, he's too much in the storyteller brain to be like, ah, what I just said was probably really fucking awful. <laughs> It's a little funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, of well, course, it's hilarious. But yeah, like, I mean, it does get Garvold thinking. Mm-hmm. That was the plan. <laughs> now I have to, now I have to take that and run with it. And do yes, something. you do. It's a relay race. Let's go. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's pretty much the soot experience. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Overall, then, it's a relatively quiet um, three or so days of travel. You all are used to this routine at this point. There's not a lot to break it. The most interesting thing comes on sort of middle of the fourth day of travel when Aya says, okay, this is where we need to turn if we're trying to get to Torquilon. And instead of Sonterra, I remember my own city names. Um, Fuck yeah, another and, turn. <laughs> and you all, you all can make make your turn and, and head, ignore the following. I'm already not ignoring it. Um, I've already done a bad job. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure my numbers were good. All right. Hey. Um. Oh. You sort of you you turn turn onto this new road. It's clear that you're going from sort of a major thoroughfare to like this is a well traveled road, but it doesn't see as many people this way mm -hmm. um and you are sort of riding walking driving for the rest of the day um and there's not too many people although after more towards the evening there is somebody who is um on foot um leading a horse sometimes and sometimes riding the horse um who is Sort of near you sometimes, sometimes crossing ahead of you, sometimes lingering behind you. But there's a couple times where you guys sort of cross, you pass them or they pass you, depending on who's going faster at a particular time. And when it comes time to camp, um, so sorry, my eye is super watery and it is possibly the most annoying sensation I've ever experienced. Um oh, no. When it comes time that you guys are sort of slowing down to camp, uh, this person uh, does kind of pause as you guys are sort of getting off the road, looks over at the setting sun, and just, would you all mind if I uh, sort of pitched a tent near you? Mm. I gotta look at him. Yeah, of course, make a perception check. Yeah, I'd like to... Uh... Like the third time we saw him, Victor was paying attention to him. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, dirty 20? Okay. Um, this is... Looking at them, looks human at first glance, very nondescript, um... Relatively fair skin, traveling clothes. Horse looks well taken care of, like good good gear on the horse for sure. Um, and looks like this is not like a 
person in squalor traveling. This is a person who has at least got enough money to put in for some decent traveling equipment. Um, yeah, that's about what you get. Victor will not stop this. She is keeping an eye on this motherfucker. Um, Does anybody actually give a yes, or are you all just sort of... Um, if, if no one says anything, Fern will be like, I'm, I don't mind. I'm not sure if anyone else does. As long as you keep your hands to yourself, I think we can get along. Yeah, of course. I'm not tr Sorry, I'm not trying to intrude on your space. It's just... I think it's always safer to camp in groups and traveling alone sort of puts a hindrance on that, so. Sure. Hmm. Suppose we should make introductions at the very least. Okay, sure. If you want. Um, they're going to sort of they they pitch their tent, they're starting to pitch their tent, like kicking out a spot and like uh uh, making sure their horse is settled, like, a, a respectful distance away. Like, it's not like they're right up on you in your camp, but just sort of adjacent. Um, mm -hmm. And so, as you're saying this, they're sort of starting to take a pack off and, and uh, get out tent supplies and things like that. I'll let them get settled up before we start fucking talking. <laughs> they, they take their time. Uh, set up their tent. Make sure their horses, uh, seem content. Seems content and happy and, um, feeds it some treats. Again, Victor is not stopping this. She is just... She's watching, and she mm -hmm. she doesn't care if they know. Okay, good to know. They're definitely they're definitely aware of you watching. Um, they make eye contact a couple times, just sort of accidentally, like looking over at the at the group. Um. And I imagine you all are sort of sitting around the fire. Yeah, so it's helped mm -hmm. start the fire. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, they come and they sit sort of on one of the one of the like rocks that's sort of around the fire, like but more more distant than the rest of you. Just sort of. Um. So where are y'all headed? Down the road. As we all are, in one way or another. Where are you headed? Down the road. No, but I, I don't really have sort of a, a going-to situation at the moment. I'm more just haven't found the right place for me, and I'm going to be on this road till I find it. So I guess in a, in a sort of a grander metaphorical sense, down the road is really about all I got. That's you know great. how it is. I do. Yeah. Y'all coming from Santerra then? We've been there. Yeah. Hi. A lot of people have. We're 
just right. silently watching this man. <laughs> I hope you, I'm just actively sitting here with like just squinting, just like. Yeah. Mm. I feel like I should have my camera on for this one too. Oh no! <laughs> for fun. Well, like I said before, I think maybe we should introduce ourselves. Oh yeah, we did. But I'm Soot. And he'll look over to the rest of the party. <laughs> Rilla. Noted. I am Garvold. Good to meet you, Garvold. I'll sing to you. Whereabouts are you from? Oh. I am simply from Camelon, I believe, if I'm correct in place names. Yeah. Hey, Camelon's a good town. It's a good place. I like Camelon. Oh, you've been? Yeah, I've been. I've been a lot of places. Um, Camelon's good, though. They got good... They got that one... That one... Um... They got that one little bookshop downtown that's like in the in the market district that's got all the you know it's run by the one the two little old lady like if you're from like you know he's describing a place that you you are aware of yes um yeah yeah i don't have a name like... for this bookstore and so neither do they <laughs> uh yes books are us got it yes yeah uh i was a good I, that's just I'm not great at local landmarks always, but that was a good, good spot. Um, do you do a lot uh, of reading, or? I mean, yeah, as much as anybody does, I think. Uh, it's just sort of a one of those things, you know. Um, but the really, it was mostly the folks who ran the shop were real nice. Um, and that always leaves a good impression of a place. Like, even if I, like, I didn't go a ton of places in Camelon, but one good experience sort of, I guess, colors the whole place for you. Anyway. There's a couple good, good cafes in town. In Camelot? Hmm. Yeah. Great ice cream. Got any well. recommendations if I make my way back there? She's going to give one. All right. She wants to do a sense motive. All yeah. right. Make a sense motive check. God, we're just like, you give us 24. a character. No. <laughs> Motherfuckers will see a character on the road and be like, this is the sussest shit I've ever seen in my life. This person um, is after us. And we yeah, all know it. For sure. This is, this is just some guy, you guys. No. Um, the way he's <laughs> suspiciously answering questions normally is too much. <laughs> Regular bitch behavior is is sus as fuck. This is real. This I rolled a twenty four. Mm, yes, you said that. I'm so sorry. With a twenty four, like this person seems like maybe a little a little awkward, but not in a sense that makes you think hostile or trying anything in any particular way it seems like 
what they said earlier sort of rings true about not wanting to camp sort of on their own. Um, and now they're not really entirely sure. They seem a little confused by what etiquette they're trying to follow. But they're trying, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Okay. That's, that's the vibe okay. you get. Make, make some hot food. We'll share rations a little bit. If they want to contribute, that's fine. Sit, Sit's just gonna go into fuck it mode um <laughs> they don't they don't ask a ton of other questions and um if there's not a ton of conversation happening at the campfire eventually they just sort of they, like they heat like a little bit of of water for tea using your fire after asking if it's okay and then they sort of all right turn it in have a good night good night good rest and they, they sort of, they head to their tent, give their horse a little more affection, and then get in their tent and supposedly go to sleep. Sid just mutters to himself, like, I wish I wasn't so fucking suspicious of everybody these days. It's the only smart thing to do. I know it's smart, but I hate feeling so fucking paranoid. Hmm. Alright, I'm assuming you all are taking watches as, as normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Alright. Make some perception checks tonight for me. Yippee. Roll a one. Nope, oh, that's not a one, but that is a. Uh, Anson, Oop, I should put the other chat. Oh, there's a one. <laughs> oh no, not you! I meant me, because I have, like, nothing to perception. Um, actually, a tech- Is this a situation I could use my earring with, or no? I think you could count the earring, yeah. Okay, well then that's a 19. Well, I rolled pretty good. 33. <laughs> ah, Jesus. 33. <laughs> Ah! Sorry. <laughs> Victor moment. <laughs> Numbers, I had to deliver scary. it like that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Um. Garbled. You get yourself stuck. Um, on your watch because you get to thinking about that bookstore that they mentioned and you're like what are the ladies names is it like <sighs> is one of them Charlotte no they both Charlotte like hey, it's one is of them fun? one of them's a C name I think Cindy not Cindy like you're, you're going in like just you get you you're you're struggling. You're like, I have spoken to these women. I've had very nice conversations with both of these women. Fuck. Is one of, is one of them an L? Laura? Lacey? Lindsay? Linda? You're, I do this often. You are having a, a distraction moment. You notice nothing ever. Um, and then your watch is over and you're like, ah, oh, shit, fuck. Was I paying attention? Listen, if anyone had, there's always someone after me, I'm sure they'll notice if something changed. <laughs> Mood. Um, Soot core. Let's see here. Uh, Soot, you're sort of tuned in, both to sort of the general area around the camp and to the tent. Um, you don't hear anything from the tent um, all night, um, except for maybe the sound of faint snoring, um, but very, very, very quiet, especially at the distance that you are from the, um, from the other tent. And otherwise, there isn't really anything 
Victor. Mm hmm. With a 33. And maybe this is just you. Um, the. After this person goes to bed, you listen for a long time. And the faint snoring that so hears, you do hear it eventually, yes, but you don't hear it for, for a good three, four hours, maybe, before, like, after they've gone to bed. Um, but once it starts, it does seem steady and doesn't seem to be faked. And... You just you don't you don't notice anything amiss but something something is bugging you and you can't put your finger on it can I cast detect magic yeah you can t cast detect magic Do I get um, anything from it? From the tent? From anything from in particular? The tent from around from the horse. Okay. In general, your first glance says no, except in the tent maybe there is sort of a weak aura. Your first thought is that could be from a magic item, that could be from this is venturing gear. It doesn't seem to be sort of concentrated and focused the way a magic item's aura would be. It's sort of more like... There's a faint... Almost shimmer to, say, Aya when you look at her under Detect Magic. Um... There's a, 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 a similar sort of, it's, it's like a gloss, like Fern would have something like that when you look at them. Um, Aya would, um, although they have different vibes. Um, so it's, it's more, it's something that basically every member of your party would have, in fact, including you. And it's, it's less, this is something magical that is occurring actively and more... This person has something magical about their being. Mm -hmm. um, but it's faint enough and vague enough that you don't have sort of a... It's not something you get a school of magic on. And again, it's not super unusual for you to see things like that. Because, quite frankly, your whole party pretty much lights up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. She will keep that in mind, uh, but let it drop. Okay. The night passes, then, without incident. And, uh, in the morning... As you guys are sort of doing your usual morning routine, they come out of their tent... Um, take it down, pack it up at the same time you guys are packing up your tent. Um, but because you have, you know, six people and this person is only one, it takes them considerably less time. And so before long, they are sort of all packed up, ready to head out. Um, get on their horse, wave to you all. Nice to see you all again. Hope to see you soon. And that, that is you, that is, motherfucker. That I, knew is perking, I knew it. That that is perking Victor's ears immediately. They're they're headed off down the road. Again? I knew it. <laughs> um, the suspicious omelet NPC guy. was suspicious. Fucking om it's omelet guy. We, Matt, no, I knew it! Sorry, I, I was fucking muted. God damn mm -hmm. it. <laughs> Garveled. I'm gonna tell you something, because most everybody else has sort of experienced this already. Okay. Um, 
That sounds odd to you, because none of your none of your companions showed any recognition of this person. And looking around, um, it still does not seem like, oh yeah, this was our good buddy that we see on the road occasionally. And you sort of look back; they're already sort of in the distance, and you think, well, that's weird. And then you think a little bit harder, and you're like. Did they introduce themselves? Nope. I don't remember they did not. learning their name. And you think, no, I thought they said they, intro- I thought we introduced ourselves to each other. But you don't remember their name. You can almost, you can picture the way they looked during introductions. You can picture the expression on their face. But now that you're imagining that you can't remember their face you don't know that you remember what they looked like you can remember that they sat on a rock next to you by the campfire but you don't remember what they looked like doing that you remember that their clothes were high quality um and and well well put together and made for a, a traveler, but you don't remember anything about what color they were, how they fit. Um, you remember what their horse looked like, but not them. And it's a very strange sensation. Oh, huh. so they're just sort of like a blank spot. Got it. Again. What the fuck was that? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm sus. Can I do? Can I roll anything? Can I also roll something? Because Victor's gonna be. You you can make. And. Um... A wisdom or an intelligence check, whichever either of you would prefer. So you could also make this. Garvel, you can't. You haven't seen this before. You don't have a comparison to this. Yes. Talk. Yes, this is acceptable. Okay. Um, what were the, guys, the, the options guys, for rolling again? Natural fucking 20. <laughs> oh, I'll options? get to that in a second. Wisdom or intelligence, wisdom uh, Ren? Wisdom or intelligence. Okay. Um, my intelligence is higher. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's... 21 for me. Okay. Alright. Let's go, Fern. Oh my god. (laughs) Now... If I'm remembering correctly... All three of you uh, were made aware of the omelette incident, um, but only certain Fern encountered. No, it was sort of the first. It was Victor and Fern, happening. I think. It was not no, it Victor. Was I'm positive was it was it? not Victor because. Oh, okay. Victor no, and Fern would was... never have taken a watch together at that yeah, point. Yeah, that's right. No. Yeah, I, I... I remember. I remember it was Soot and Fern because we post that happening. We were like, if it had been Victor and Fern, yeah. Victor Victor would have like stabbed somebody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, okay. it, I, it had to have been Soot. Okay. Yeah. Because it was either which, it was either Soot and Fern or Fern and Aya, um, which I feel like it was probably Soot and Fern because they were hanging out a bit early. It was days. Yeah. it was Soot and Fern. Um, which makes makes this make a little bit more sense that you guys are sort of the higher higher end of the rules here, um, Victor. This kind of sort of memory gap modification something this is something that people can do, right? There's there's magic that modifies memory. Um, there's magic that like obscures features. Um, the way that it I'm so glad that you uh, slapped that uh, into the chat, Matt. Um, 
there's there's ways people can sort of manipulate memories. Um, most of it is quite powerful magic and and would have if there was something sort of active and ongoing um you're sure victor that you would have seen it on your uh spell last night so that suggests rather that this is not an active they cast a spell and modified your memories of this whole encounter, but more that something about them made them difficult to remember in the first place. Um, He's still not happy about this. I will (laughs) say you make, you do not make a connection to um, the omelet incident or anything else. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Soot, you remember weeks ago now, before even you got at her back um Mm -hmm. you and fern had been sitting watching and somebody had come up and sat by the fire with you and you'd talked for a while they told you their name but you couldn't remember it and they talked to you for a bit and then when they got up they said it was nice to see you again fern and nice to meet you sit and walked away, and you remember that. And it felt exactly the same as it did now. You, you, you didn't remember who they were. And you didn't recognize this person at all, you're sure of it. But you think that must have been, that must have been the same person. Because it, it, how you feel after it trying to remember feels the same you're not sure you're going to be able to recognize them again in fact you're almost certain that you're not but you're pretty confident this is either the same person or somebody who was just like that person who also had reason to meet you all before and that seems unlikely um fern hi you remember everything that um, I just told Sit. Mm-hmm. You also remember the Denny's and uh-huh. conversations about a person that poor Leighton Krispy Kreme could not <laughs> remember any details about except for the fact that six omelets. Six omelets. The, <laughs> except for their omelet crimes, you could not. You, you. They couldn't remember anything about this how, person, what they looked like, you, who they were. How could you forget the omelet crimes? But they, by God, they remembered the omelet crimes, and that paired with the fact that you remember things like seeing them pitch their tent. You remember seeing them give their horse treats. You remember them sitting at the fire on the rock and making tea. You even remember the specific words they said to you. You just can't remember them. Um, that... Do, that's do one I of those, also... Sorry, go ahead. It's one of those things that's sort of annoyingly specific in the sense that you remember their actions and deeds but not them themselves. And when things are annoyingly specific like that, it's almost always on purpose somehow. Mm -hmm. So this, it feels familiar in a sense. Um, (laughs) It seems like you don't know exactly what rules this is playing by, but you know this type of rule set. Mm-hmm. Uh, what were you going to ask? I was going to ask, do I connect this to um, the person flight that I spoke to months ago? I, with a nat 20, I will say yes. You have drawn the lines between one, two, three, and now four data points. Okay. 
Hmm. Omelette guy. You've connected the dots. Someone, someone needs to get a tattoo of this guy, like... <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want to see my little boy. <laughs> there so he it's goes. just we'll... like I will say, Victor in the in the in the in the succeeding minutes becomes considerably more agitated. <laughs> but is fine. She's so normal about it. So it just sits there for a minute, staring off into space. <laughs> God, you'd think I'd be used to the weird shit. Come on, oh. let's get up, let's get moving. Fern has a neutral <laughs> expression. Certainly. It very deliberately. Yeah. There's they're not nothing's happening in their head. Alright. You guys are able to get up and get moving. What 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 pace are you all taking? Um I mean we don't have a reason to go very fast. I feel like we'd just be going at the same pace we were going before, right? Unless unless Victor wants to go faster because Victor's agitated. No. <laughs> Victor does not want to get any closer to that person. Um she is a little testy about the time it takes everyone to pack up and get going. But other than that... If you, if you, if you bark at Sit, he's just like, you want to do it for me? <laughs> Relax. And she... You just kind of get a dirty look in response, and she goes to bother somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's not what I thought, dear. <laughs> you literally hear like the mm, yeah like <laughs> so it's not gonna put up with it today <laughs> sorry victor <laughs> all right he does help hitch the horses though You guys are able to uh, pretty easily get back on the road. Victor's testiness aside, um, Astris is going to be here soon, and my throat is dry, so I'm going to go fill my water bottle um, and take take five, and then we will be back in business. I also desperately need to go get something to eat, so I will be right back as well. I want a snack, but I don't have anything to snack on at the moment. Man, you're so hungry. I'm considering making some tea and getting some biscuits. Oh, tea sounds so good. <laughs> oh, uh, honestly, yeah. Tea sounds really good. You know, good. I'm going to put the kettle on. I'll be right back. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Matt! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I understand the tea energy. Yeah, it sounds good. I want some.
things that make Victor cancelable, she responds to stress and mental illness triggers with anger and not sad boy panic attack. I love her. I'm I'm in the I'm in the fandom trenches for Victor. <laughs> I'm waging Someone has wars to on be. her behalf. I'm waging wars on her behalf. <laughs> I'm I'm getting cancelled. It's worth it. <laughs> She's never done anything wrong. God for God forbid women do anything. <laughs> God forbid women do anything. But this memory guy is the exact opposite of a character I'm about to be playing, which is fantastic. <laughs> because oh. I'm about to be playing a character that literally cannot gain new memory. Oh. Yeah. Ask Twist! Oh. Ask Twist! Astuis? Okay, now I can hear you guys. Sorry, it was set to my headphones for some reason. Oopsie. It is okay. Hello, Astuis. Hello, how are you all? I have COVID again. Oh, fuck, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> my sister brought it in the house. It's... It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I've had it like two or three times and it still sucks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dabs. Hired Parker Dab. I'm so exhausted. I have, like, no symptoms, but, like, the fatigue, TM. Yeah. No. Like, I have a little bit of congestion. And, like... <laughs> I'm a little headachey, but I'm headachey 24-7 anyway. I am just so fucking tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so, updates on what's happened. Um, travel. The gals have been taking watch together. Um, one night a guy shows up and is like, hey, can I camp with you guys? Because I'm alone and I don't want to camp alone. And people were like, sure, TM. Um, <laughs> Suspicious. Also, hi, Astros. And is that where we're at right now? Uh, he no, left. he just left, and we are all realizing we can't remember his face. My God, it's Omelet Guy. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's 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 Omelet Guy. I love Omelet Guy. <sighs> Astros, have you met Omelet Guy? I have no idea who Omelet Guy is. Astros, Omelet Guy is um the guy who at the Denny's ordered six omelets at Ooh. the same time. Oh my god. A legend. Um, An awful, awful legend. And and every encounter we've had with Omelet Guy, we've had several, it ends with, you don't remember what they looked like. And it's like, and at the end of every interaction, we're like, fuck, it was Omelet Guy. 
<laughs> um, omelet guy is the stranger. And Damn it, omelet guy. From this point on, we'll never miss an omelet guy thing. I'm going to call it out every time now that I know who he is. Um, he left being like, nice to see you guys again, when none of us remember meeting him. Um, or at least did not recognize him from previous uh, encounters. Yeah. The first uh, time that um, we encountered this NPC uh, was when Fern and Sit were on watch, like, session, like, nine or something. And uh, when they left, uh, they were like, nice to see you again, Fern, and, and left when Fern had no memory of talking to this person before. Um, so this has been a thing with this, with this guy. And they also fucking ordered six omelets from the Denny's. New, new lore needs which to is be why we call him, Which is why we call him Omelet Guy. I am now obsessed with finding out Omelet Guy's origin story. Um, Me too. I have to, I have to know. Victor, this this happened. Victor immediately got super testy. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, Gobble just sitting there, just like, huh? I got caught by my own trick. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you got punked. <laughs> oh, yeah, so Gobble. That's how it feels. <laughs> Yeah, Gavol does have, like, that very limited, like, memory delete. It's just the, like, oh, we'll just jump back a few seconds and pretend that didn't happen. Victor also has a similar spell. Um, I think Victor actually has, uh... No, I have a spell called False Belief, which is mm. kind of the same, but different. Yeah, like, memory lapse, it's just, yeah, it's just, like... We'll, we'll redo that one. <laughs> False belief is let me temporarily rewrite some memories and then like in a couple of hours it will undo itself. Mm. Yeah, mine is essentially it's just like, hey, you know that uh, check you just made for diplomacy intimidation or something? Mm -hmm. um, do it again. <laughs> I forgot I had this. Oops. Mine is basically a get out of free jail, get out of free, uh, get get out of jail free card for like zone of truth. Yeah, it it's just it's so entertaining because it's like, I I do like that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then my one is just, it's like, Whoops. Mm, did you give too much information away? Let's oh yeah, the you claw did that to us when you like betrayed some of your um, midnight sun stuff. You're like, oh, never mind, I'm taking it back. <laughs> Because <laughs> you did that to us, I think. I think I considered, but it only, it's a one target thing, is the issue. Mm. Oh, yeah, um, no, you just brought it up. Never mind. I was thinking something else. Yeah, I was just like, hmm, I can't do this. Um, but yeah, it, like, that's the thing. The Garfield thing is, like, in a one on one conversation, oh, I've given too much information away, or I've angered this person. Um, the issue is. That it is a save, so if they succeed, then you just look worse. <laughs> That's just God, like I would love person. to redact over sharing. Oh, <laughs> you love a little redacting. If I could redact all the times I've ever shared, that would be incredible. Right. No sharing, only redacting. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Astro. Hello, Pickle. How is it going? It's going. As it so frequently does. Um, is, have you gotten a recap of what psychological warfare I'm inflicting? Yes. Excellent. You never, you never, omelet guy, was, the omelet guy incident was before your time, though. Yes. Okay. So Danela and Garvold are on the same boat of, like, bruh. New experience, I guess. He is never escaping my notice again. If <laughs> if he pops up again, I'm calling you out that second. 
yes. this is a threat. I bet you are. I bet you will do that. The moment you were like, you see a person on the run, I'm like, this has got to be a little guy again. Especially considering they were like, mind if I be next to your camp for a while? I'm like, this is suspicious. <laughs> Yeah, to Omelet um, Guy, y'all are just these people uh, they keep showing up and, and, and like running into. And it's like, well, at this point, it's weirder if I go somewhere else to camp. Um, yeah. I'm now Omelet Guy's biggest fan. Yeah. My new favorite cryptid. Omelet Man. Omelet Guy is the only cryptid, <laughs> in fact. Hey, don't leave Matchbox out. Come on. <laughs> Moth Match. Moth match in like what is that level twelve? <laughs> I can box. make moth match real. <laughs> I I believe in moth box. Moth um, box, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, attitudes are varying between tense and uh, Joe. Joe. Oh my god, this is so exciting. I love Joe. Joe muted. Which I believe is maybe intentional. Love when there's a Joe. Literally. Literally love when there's a Joe. It is. Yep. Such an enhancement. So. Oh, escape cast? Whoa. Escape cast? Joe, you just missed psychological warfare, but it's okay, because I'm not done yet. There's goop now. Just kidding. Uh, omelet guy. Yeah. Omelet guy incident. We, omelet to electric boogaloo. You got um, omeleted. Level four omelet incident. There's egg on our faces. I was, was hoping someone would say that. <laughs> God... Omelette guy was very polite. I don't know why anybody has negative feelings about oh, omelette guy. I don't have a negative no, feelings. No. It's just like, ah, oh, dang, ah, oh, shucks, we got omelette in. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You he know... just seems like a nice guy. You know no, exactly just... why. <laughs> you know exactly why Victor's upset. I do. Um, okay, Joe. So basically, what happened is y'all are about four, five days. It we are five days now. You were four days yesterday. Um, onto your journey to Torcalon, and you, um, somebody who was sort of traveling at a similar pace to you on the road, like, wanted to camp, um, at around the same time, was like, hey, I don't like camping, like, on my own on the road. Is it chill if I camp, like, near you? Can I just, like, stick my tent near your tent so I look less like a juicy appetizing morsel? And everybody's like, um, yeah, okay, I guess. Sus is all hell. You had a little campfire chat with them in the morning. They pa- packed up, headed out, and was like, it was good to see you again. Um, and fucked off. And that was the extent of Omelette Guy. Look, but Omelette Guy's gotta do- know that he's doing these things. Like, they gotta be self-aware a little bit. Uh, I so very much <laughs> hope he doesn't, though. Yes, it same. would be funny. <laughs> Um, the, the party made some various and sundry wisdom or intelligence checks, and, uh, Soot and Fern, Soot to a lesser extent, Fern with a nat 20, has drawn, has, has connected the dots. They've connected them, um, but has not yet said anything about the connection of the dots. Um, but overall, it's been a good time. First... Five days to talk alone, very chill. Maybe about four days. Four? No, I didn't. My, I didn't do my math right. Five days left um, to get to talk alone, and I'm probably not even gonna make you guys do a road combat because I don't really like road combat. Valid. Bless you. Thank you. I like road combat is fun when I'm when I don't have to come up with it mm-hmm. and i don't feel like coming up with it and it, it it just would it would serve to bog the story down at this point in time mm-hmm. God, um, right. as another note then as we are moving along i will say uh fern hi unfortunately 
you are getting some of the coldest shoulder you've ever gotten. Um. <laughs> okay. And Victor will not explain why. Um. If anyway, I I'm not gonna poke at that. If she, if she's not talking, then she's not talking. Whatever. Very this is, fair and this, correct. Um, I'm so sorry. This about is her. how communication works between characters. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. You never speak to each other. Nah. You, you simply don't talk to each other. Who needs to talk? <laughs> we all know it the does best get a point. little worse after the omelet guy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I, um, oh seven. <laughs> yeah, oh seven. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, for the next five days of travel, y'all have some options. Y'all can communicate with each other. Y'all cannot communicate with each other. Y'all can choose to um, seek out uh, other people on the road and be sus as hell and try and figure out if other people are um, omelet guy. I don't recommend this option, but like you can if you want to. Um, or you can carry on and we can gently, quietly, carefully fast forward until you're getting to the Torcolone area. Carry on, mayhaps. Carry on. All right. If there are any 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 specific uh, interactions that you would like to have, feel free to stop me along the way. Otherwise, it's the hunt for Omelet Man. Is it could be a one shot, or it could be a a whole campaign arc later on. You don't even know. <laughs> I love fishing. Um, <coughs> so, like I said, if I said, I think I said, five days-ish more to Torcolone. As you're getting there, um, as you're approaching, uh, to some of you, particularly um, Soot and Victor, the terrain and the vibe, at least, gets a little more like, okay... I know, I know, like, if I if I don't know this specific area, like, I know the area around this area, or even the area around the area around this, like, this is more, mm -hmm. like, comfortable, even just in personal etiquette as you move further west, um, in the sense that there is more direct acknowledgement from people on the road, in the sense of, you, as you pass people, you will make eye contact and nod because that is the polite thing to do. Um, you will not, however, speak to people unprompted because that is also the thing you do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and for both Soot and Victor, this is just how you are on the road naturally because that is common <laughs> etiquette where you're from. To other people, it's like... Why does everybody fucking nod at us when we're passing them? It's what you do. It you is what you do. Well, you have also <laughs> been in this area before, and so you are familiar with this social etiquette. Pierre and Suarez do engage in this sort of general social custom. Um, you just, you do have to sort of acknowledge, as they explain to you, you acknowledge everyone. Um, because you don't want to neglect or ignore anyone um, on the off chance that it would be upsetting to them. Uh, Danela, you you don't really experience this normally in this, like, plane, because this is not really where you're from, but you also, like, understand that kind of etiquette. Garbled, you're just kind of like, okay, I guess we nod at people here. Sure. 
listen, it's a ball thing, like, as well. Like, I, yeah. listen, me, as an adult human, I understand the head nod these days. Yeah. I'm from, you got... I'm from the mid, from the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> the Midwest nod no, is no, a no. thing, for sure. You, 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 you gotta be nodding is the thing, mm -hmm. and, and, is, is, Fey culture in my universe a little influenced by the fact that I'm Midwestern. More than a little. Absolutely. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Good. This is this is you why thought, the Fey's great. <laughs> you thought the Midwestern farmers were 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 bad at a Midwestern goodbye? Y'all wait till you get stuck in the Feywild. Um but all this to say. As you approach, you're pretty much getting on day five, which is really day ten, getting to what is the border of the county of Iliad, and uh, Torcolone is situated on that border, um, technically inside it. And it is a smaller town than Camlin by a fair bit, but it's not tiny. It's not a village. It's still got um, a little a little shopping district. It's still got several several um, inns scattered throughout the town. It's still got more than a few, you know, uh, taverns and and many yes, you do have a special escape condition to the Midwestern goodbye. Sorry, I I can't read chat and, and describe things at the same time. It's a smaller town than Camlin, but it's not absolutely tiny. <laughs> what is the name of the pub Pierre and Suarez run? That is a fantastic question, Joe, and you're never going to guess what I bet I didn't put in my notes for this session. <laughs> oh, no. This is so funny. Emily? Emily, help. <laughs> Emily? <laughs> my god. You I have open a Google Doc with notes on all of my NPCs that I need. And you know what I don't have in that Google Doc? The name of their little their little pub. It's not in here. I have I have uh, fantasy name generators on my hot bar of, of bookmarks and I rewrote it so that it the bookmark is called Emily Fantasy Name Generators. That honestly Good. I need that because every time I go to go to fantasy name generators, I don't start typing with an F. I start with an E and I'm then I'm like it's not nope. Typing in Emily will not help me. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. God. Emily Fantasy Name Generators are beloved. Our favorite. Yeah. Shout out. Saved the so many lives. I don't know how familiar Astros and Matt are with Emily fantasy name generators. Um, I, I DM. Yeah. Yeah, it makes that, sense. That's all the answer you need. Yeah. See, I think some... Look, I, this might be controversial, but like people who write books really need to use Emily fantasy name generators. Um, they don't know how to name their characters sometimes. By God, they're awful. <laughs> At least some books I've read. Jesus. <laughs> Emily Fantasy Name Generators single-handedly upholding such an important resource. Yeah. Yeah. What would we do without her? Okay. There, there we go. Romanian instead. That's what we needed. <laughs> that was okay. my answer. All right, so um, Aya does not tell you the name of the pub, um, but the name of the pub for anybody who's curious, because I'm sure Aya is, is the Old Lake. Um, and it is, if it, Aya, are you full sending straight to uh, straight to the Old Lake um, as sort of the start of your? A tour of Tor Cologne, are you taking anybody to anywhere else?
We do love an in-room moment. Yeah. That is easy enough to do. Figure out a stable situation. If you want to get in, uh, I still have uh, fantasy name generators open, so I can get you an in right now. Um. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. All right. In time. It's a nice place. It is run by um or the one that Aya takes you to is a nice place. Aya, you would actually know this place. You're not gonna just take them to some random um random spot. You're gonna take them to somewhere that you are familiar with that you know at least comes on recommendation of your friends. And you are going to Wait a minute while PK picks a name from this list. <laughs> because that's that's how it works sometimes. It's run it's run by this this nice um gnomish man in either case. He's sort of got he's he's an interesting looking gnome. He's got sort of pale green skin and hair that looks kind of like moss. Um and and if you look closer, you're like, maybe it's not kind of like moss. Maybe it is moss, but you're not gonna you're not gonna Ashen Adora. Uh Ash and Adora is here. Um, it is. It is just Ash and Udora. Um, the the name of the inn is um, uh, the name of the inn is the Lucky Frog. And I'm going to write it down so that I don't forget inn names this time. Okay. And how many rooms are y'all trying to get situated? I guess, I guess it depends on who's willing to share. That is my question, because things have changed a little bit since the last time um, bitches and motherfuckers had to pick rooms. So what's your situation? If it's possible, Victor wants a solo room. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's willing to share. Aya's willing to share. He's always happy to share. He's happy to share. Um, yep. Gob Gobble's happy to share. Garble's happy to share. Well, well I'm just a bitch over. then. Dibs. Yeah, Dibs on we're actually normal people. We're just like, you know, maybe we're friends. I know Fern also wants their own room. All right. So Victor it, it was Fern. ha ha joke. I'm so sorry. And so no, it's okay. Fern's they, also being a bitch. Victor and Fern are being bitches. They get singles. Um, I, uh, I mean, I guess the real question is, is it like a big slumber party with the other four, or is it like two and two? Uh, Both are funny, and I will not make this choice for you. Either we have a big slumber party, or... <laughs> or two little slumber parties. Two little slumber parties, or one big slumber... Really? Are we not all enjoying the slumber party of life? This is zero opinion on a slumber party size, boys. Oh my god, I was talking and muted. I said slumber party, yes, please. I was oh, saying yes. slumber party. Yes. What, fuck All it, let's slumber one. party. Um, mostly because Sid shouldn't be alone, probably. All <laughs> right, slumber party. So we're getting we're getting one one big room for the slumber party, and then two individuals. So you guys have three rooms at the Lucky Frog. Mm -hmm. Um, the gnome man, 
by the way, the owner who knows Aya and, and says hi to you and is excited to see you, uh, he, he introduces himself as Grime. Grime, Grime. yes! Grime. I love that. Oh my god. Grime. <laughs> what a creature of a man. Oh, I love it. That's the best. His name is Grime. And um, he's, a, he's a friendly lad. He's got a little lilt to his step, you know. He's he's a very bouncy man. He's the kind of guy who doesn't he doesn't walk into a room. He bounces into a room. Do you know the kind oh, of guy I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. God. That's not that. That's a rhyme. Walk. That's he's, so he's, fun. He's, he's a, he did not used to be a frog. He just likes frogs and moss and and things and uh, dirt. He's bisexual. He, uh, <laughs> yes. He's a um, he's a TikTok bisexual. <laughs> as as you do, um, all all gnomes are, are any gnomes straight? No, I can answer know. because I'm God. The answer is no. Um, they don't make straight gnomes. Um, L. Gnomes can be interested in other genders, of course. Um, no gnome has ever decided on a single gender, mostly because gnomes don't even have a consistent set of genders. Also, they need new experiences. So they true. need new experience. They literally die. Straight, yeah. straight is death. Yeah, being being cishet as a gnome is a death sentence. Um, it's just not enriching enough for them, so they don't. Whoops, whoops. Um, and and also for real, gnomes do not actually have um the same sort of sense of gender that many other races seem to have. They certainly don't have the same um, binary of biological sex. Um, to anybody's knowledge, there's as many as 10, 12, possibly 13 um, different sort of categorizations of biological sex in gnomes, which is not even not even touching gender, which, again, the only reason... It's sort of like a translation thing. If you speak gnomish, pronouns are kind of whatever they're going to be. Um, and then gnomes in common sort of just pick whatever is sort of closest to what their vibe needs to be. And that's that's how you get... Yeah, this is that's so true, Joe. That's actually inaccurate. Um, <laughs> gnomes invented micro-identities. Gnomes, yeah. gnomes got micro. Baby girl, gnomes got micro labels you couldn't even dream of. Um, Love that for them. Good for Victor, them. Victor, Victor speaks gnomish and had a great time picking out pronouns. Um, yeah, like you, your pronouns in common, they can be whatever you want. They just won't be as interesting as your pronouns in gnomish. Like it just, yeah, yeah. the gnomish pronoun process as you're learning gnomish, and you're like, wait. There's no direct translation of my pronouns. I'm gonna think a little bit about my gender. This um, is this is why Sit when he learned Numish, he was like, mm, I, you know, you could say I'm cis, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> you could say, exactly by by learning the the act of learning Numish, even if you're cis, it is enough to get you to cis plus because mm. like it just just having so to true. think about your gender hard enough to pick a set of Numish pronouns or multiple is like. Yeah. It's great. Um, <laughs> shout out to being cis plus. That's the best, actually. <laughs> shout out to being cis plus. Um, you can be cis plus in Gnomish, and and they they encourage it for you. Hell yeah. Okay, so side side tangent about Gnomish gender aside. Um, <laughs> it is three hundred and seventy eight, as we know. But like, you just you wait. You you look at Grime the wrong way. It's about to be three hundred and seventy nine. Um, <laughs> we all know the best so, way to get more gender is to be spiteful about it. Literally. So, Aya, after everybody gets settled, slumber party in one room, Victor in another, and Fern in another still. Do you plan... Fuck around slash find out our valid gnomish pronouns. Somebody sent me a... Sam sent me a video yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be able to get off the gnome gender tangent because I've actually thought a lot about it. Sam uh, Sam sent me a video the other day that was like some, you know, conservative, awful, you know, white man being like, 
Uh, my pronouns are, uh, dear God, please stop. Um, because he was, he didn't want to, you know, answer the question. And, uh, I gotta say, <laughs> no mish pronouns. Yeah. And, yeah. So, Aya, are you, t it's probably, it's like, it's like five o'clock. You taking the homies to meet the homies. Excellent. Um, sorry to do this while you're bound to like mutation, not mutation. That's to bound to being <laughs> mutant in public transport. Mutation is a different thing. Um, it's wordless. Not the same thing. Wordless. I'm I'm doing my best with the English language today, boys. It's you're doing great, buddy. Don't you're worry doing about a great it. job. It's mid at best. Um, so. Sorry to bring you to your blorbos while you are having to be muted, Joe, but it's how it be. Um, and yes, you are going to take them to the old lake, which is, it's not like directly in like sort of the market shopping district. It's more like sort of out of the way, but out of the way in the way that it's like, this is the good spot, you know? You know when, like, there's some restaurants that it's like, if this were in sort of the main area of town, it would be less good just by being there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is this is that energy. Um, so so it's it's a little out of the way, but immediately as you approach it, the vibe you get is just warm. It is. In another life, it, what what makes you think that it's not already a mob front? Um, but the vibe <laughs> you get is warm, welcoming. Um, it's completely different to some place like Sweetwater because there's no awful music outside and nobody's fighting at the moment. Um, it's it's sort of just this nice. You hear sort of a pleasant bustle from inside and some chatter, and. Uh, you all can head in to the, this is also true, to the old lake. And inside, where are my pit crews? I need Pierre. Where is my mm. beloved? Inside, the first thing you see um, behind the counter, uh, this is a terrible picture, not because of its accuracy. It's perfectly accurate, but because I, I have her holding a knife in it for some reason. Behind the <laughs> counter, um, making boisterous chatter with uh, a customer who's sort of uh, leaning leaning across. Um, you get, where is appearances? Here we go. You see one of the tallest women you've ever seen. Um, she's, she must be like six, six at a minimum and good Lord. she's very, she's very pale and she has very, very dark hair, but it's short. Um, and it is, it is a little bit ruffled up at the moment. It looks like she probably ran her hands through it a few times and was not thinking about it. And now it's a little bit messy. Um, Putting it in appearances chat. This is Pierre. Yes. You do not know this yet, although I may point her out to you. Um, and indeed, as you enter, uh, she sort of looks up to do the typical like bartender wave, greet new customers coming in, goes back to her conversation for a second, then looks up again because she has done a double take and seen Aya there. And she just claps her customer on the shoulder, sets down whatever she was holding, rolls out from behind the counter and, Aya, Aya, oh, it is so good to see you. You have brought your friends. Yes, we got your letter two days ago. Come here, come here. And um, she is going to pull you into a hug. Excellent. Um, 
get hugged idiot. This woman is very tall and very strong. Uh, she does like the little lift you up and spin you around um, without even a hint of effort. And you are used to this. This is classic, classic Pierre behavior. Um, she, she will set Aya down after a minute. Um, not a full minute, but like, this is, this is one of them long hugs with the homies. Um, and, and she turns then to the rest of you and, oh, you must be Aya's friends then. Yes, I am Pierina Karpakova. Just call me Pieri. We are friends. You are among friends here. Hello, come in, come in, come in, sit down. Appreciate the hospitality. Sit so well. Take a seat. Everybody, everybody gets sort of shuffled, shuffled off to a table. Um, Pierre does need to briefly step away to return uh, to the customer she was chatting with um, to grab a refill for them, and then she's coming back over to your table and. All right, now, what can I get you all to eat? Have you just arrived? You need something to eat. You must be starving here. Come on. And she's passing out menus. Hell yeah. If there's anything that's, like, something, like, food-wise that Soot would have missed from, like, Ganguet or something, he might go and, and pick it off the menu if it's there. Yeah, Victor also wants kind of a regional, a regional thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. There are definitely some regional specialties to be had. Um, overall, I'm not going to get into specifics, but it's just good, warm, um, well-cooked food, um, and all the options sound comforting and appetizing. It's very, it's hot very dish. homey comfort food vibe. <laughs> hot um, dish. <laughs> hot dish. And she will take take all your orders and then sort of bustle back. Um, into into the the kitchen area and says she'll be back out in a few minutes and she will tell she says i will tell my wife you are here oh she's going to be so excited to meet you all and to see you aya um victor is watching this woman leave god bless <laughs> and it's a beautiful sight hmm. <laughs> And she got cake. God bless. Good for her. God bless. And he is away for a few minutes. Overall, again, the atmosphere in the pub is just very warm, homey. It's it's not crazy packed in there, but like you're sort of, you're filling up sort of the last available big table and there's a bunch of other smaller tables and one other large table. Like, there's there's sort of a a good mix. They've still got a few open tables, but it's it's overall a nice sort of bustling, but not overcrowded, just sort of good energy. Mm-hmm. So who's that, Aya? I forgot that you're muted. I asked you a question. <laughs> Sorry. Unkind. I know I wanna I wanna give a little bit of I love that she was also like, let me go get my wife. <laughs> this is not phase Victor. Yeah, no, I figured, but it also is just so funny to me. <laughs> Do you think a little thing like being married stops Victor's whore energy? No. No. <laughs> I mean, also, sometimes that's, like, you know, a thing. That it's fine. <laughs> I'm... I love the way Aya speaks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Listen, Victor is like, if they're married and it's a no-no, they'll say something. If they're mm -hmm. Victor and it's a no-no, but they're going to do any it anyway, they won't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If, if they're married and it's okay, then okay. Yeah, there's no harm. If you get told no, you get told no. The way 
What is the end of prologue from Great Comet? It's literally just, what about Pierre? Over and over and over and over again. <laughs> that, that is what I have felt this entire campaign, not having Pierre here with me. This is, this is, this is a beloved to me. This is, she's like a Blorbo. Um, she's iconic. She's, she's like a blurbo to me. She's she's like a butch lesbian to me, and that is that makes that makes one a blurbo. This is honestly, true. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Bag of hell, so that is the right term, yeah. I will say as well, it is not Pierre who comes out to bring you all um, drinks or your food. Um, she, uh, is sort of, you see her a little bit flitting in and out of the back, um, and she keeps, she'll glance over a few times and, like, make a hand gesture, like, I will be back, I am just busy, um, mm -hmm. and, but you do, you do receive, um, your foodstuffs, and for Suit and Victor, it's like, you, you ordered something regional that you're like, I have opinions on this. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if they get it wrong, I'm not going to be mad, but I'm going to be disappointed. And Why'd you have you no reason to be disappointed. <laughs> oh, it hell is, yeah. It is good. To, whatever you have ordered, you're like, oh, fuck yeah. Thank God. This is what I wanted. This, this is the only reason worth being near home. Yeah. Real and true. Um, <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, Joe, do you want me to make you a, uh, sense motive check on roll 20? Or do you just want general vibes, like, tell, have the party tell you what the general vibes are right now without a sense motive? A motive. 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 <laughs> What are what are party vibes? So it's chillin'. He still looks a little bit meh about things, but like when is he not? Um <laughs> Um Victor is fucking enjoying her meal and also kind of homosexual. Uh, not in this town, though. Not yet, at least. Oh, I need to update the counter. Um, Danela saw a beautiful giant woman and is all starry-eyed. Yeah! <laughs> that was my first thought. <laughs> mm-hmm. Victor, Victor and Danela are both being gay over the butch woman. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Right now, he's actually Gotham. taller than Danela. <laughs> uh -huh. And pasty and black hair to boot. Come on. Yeah. Garvold, sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, Garvold is absolutely giving just tourist vibes right now. Like, obviously, has not been to a second place in his life. <laughs> Taurus. Whole new place. Listen, he's lived in one town and has not left. <laughs> Bless him. You really do be the small town kids that want to become the vigilantes, huh? Because it's too <laughs> fucking boring anyway. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Sorry, I'm gonna. I'm typing a message to a player at the moment. Mm -hmm. It is okay. Um, Victor's normal about this dish. Um, <laughs> Victor. 
character is normal absolutely incorrect. So true. But I love her. <laughs> um, Victor has not been fun to travel with for the past couple of days, I will say. <laughs> Yeah, Fern, Fern is... Fern has not been on Victor's level, but Fern has been... icy. Mm -hmm. Poor Garfold. S Since it's in Ayla and Aya, like, yes, our boy Garbled, we're going to socialize him. Um... Victor and Fern, like, I am about to have such rancid traveling vibes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, also for Danela, you did miss the incredibly, um, the incredible call out without mean intention. Oh, for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, huh, boring. <laughs> boring Soot? wish and desire. So yeah. basically, Soot was like, Soot walked up to Garvold and was like, hey, what legacy do you want to live and leave for behind? And Garfield was Garfield was like, not really about myself, but like, I guess the Midnight Sun's chill, but they don't need my help with that. And so it was like, hmm, boring. We'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure out something better than that. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't try to um, make it sound that way, but like, he was in the yeah. the storyteller mode of like, what could I do to make this better? Um, <laughs> this story don't compel me. You don't compel but me it, at the moment. You do as a person, but also your story needs to be interesting for you to stand out as this version of the Midnight Sun. As um. as as a narrative device, you are lacking. But don't yeah. worry, we'll fix that. We'll we'll good, <laughs> we'll revise this draft. <laughs> it was it was such a moment. Um. It definitely got thinking, but it was still somehow a positive interaction. Yeah. See, that's just like the that soot experience. Combined. You can have the worst interaction with soot and it would still be pretty good. Probably. At, at, after, after you guys have sort of started digging into your food, um, Pierre comes back out of the back, um, not alone. She comes uh, sort of trailed by a woman who is 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 much much smaller. Um, sort of uh, probably like five five. She is um, nice nice. Where is my where is my image? Where is my fucking image? Oh my god! I had it. I had it. Specifically, I just saved it to this folder. Why is it not in the folder? Oh no. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm winning. What? I'm winning. I'm winning. I believe in you. I do too, buddy. You got this. Sorry. There she is. She has long, curly white hair. Her skin is um, considerably uh, more tan um, than than both her, her wife's skin and her own hair, so it looks darker in comparison. She has very, very dark um, black eyes that are sort of very glossy um, in a way. Like, they're, they reflect they reflect light in an interesting way. Her eyes, you can't really tell where there is a pupil, but they're very, very dark. Um, and... Uh, she is is in sort of a where where Pierre is definitely like this is a butch lesbian. This is a very um, Soros is wearing like a gray dress that has like a very nice open neckline and a long sort of swooshy skirt that looks very finely finely tailored. There's lovely embroidery on it. It's it's a very it's a very nice looking dress, but it's it's um, this femme. Um, the other, the other half, um, and she does have these big, sort of round, silvery glasses. Um, that everything about her is like a little bit round, and the glasses sort of enhance that appearance. But her hair is very, very long and curly. Oh, I love the pit that. crew shows it like just below her shoulders. In actuality, it's closer to like down to her waist. Oh, she's um, so even as curly as it is. Victor is also being homosexual about this. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Victor and Danela both like, hmm, women. Yes. <laughs> Shout out to women. Um, Pierre comes back um, uh, with with her beautiful wife in tow. Uh, there are two chairs left, and Pierre sort of pulls one around, and she she sits on it backwards because she's that kind of person. Oh, um, God. Soirees. I literally just sighed. Oh yeah. <laughs> she I went. It's not like it's not like straddling the chair backwards, but it's like like she's sitting like with her legs on one side of the chair and like leaning over the back oh of the chair God. towards you. You can't you know? do this to me, PK. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, we can. Joe, Joe, Joe voice Joe. rights. Joe. Hello, Welcome home. Um, perfect timing. Pierre sits down and says, How is your food? Tell me, I'm, I hope it is wonderful. If it is not, I will get you something else. This is lovely. I don't think I've had I don't think I've had this prepared this this good in a long, long time. Ah, uh, well, you flatter us. We do try our best. Everyone, this is my beautiful wife's twenties. Pleasure um, to meet you. Lovely to meet you too. Oh, yeah. oh it's so good to see you. Spree, it's been so long. My travels have come take me. You are both looking so well. Oh, you're looking wonderful, dearie. And I don't you worry about anything. It's it's so wonderful to see you. I'm so I'm so excited to hear about all your travels. Your letters have been fascinating. We also did get to see Princess recently. Princess and Jasper. Oh, wonderful. I've missed them both. How is Jasper doing? Is, uh, is he all doing all right over in, in Sonterra? I know it is a bigger city than he's used to. He's doing good. Someone got him an apartment that's... It, it's a giant sun rock. He's ah. got a job. She doesn't fear with that much doubt. There, there is sincere excitement for him. Yeah. Uh, Pierre does. Pierre does look surprised. Um, Sorry, yeah. looks excited. Pierre. Pierre does look a little surprised. Um, <laughs> what kind of work is he doing? I'm gonna be honest. I don't entirely know. He was working with a. Mortician, is that the word? Uh, out of character, was mortician how? Mortician, it, described, uh, it was described as a coroner's office, but it should be a mortician's <laughs> office. The, the shade! <laughs> uh, stop being assistant. I don't actually know what he does, but he certainly had a job. And uh, out of character, that was in Sonterra? That yes. was in Sonterra, yes. Yeah, in some time. We will have to go visit soon. Soon, I would like to go see Jasper again. And Princess. I have not seen Prince. I know she keeps so busy with her work. But come now, come now. Tell me. Tell me all of your names. It is so good to meet all of you. Victor. Victor. I will also offer a hand to shake. She will shake your hand, as will Soris. Uh, Danela, and she'll give a little finger wiggle. <laughs> you get a nod from both of them. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you both. I'm uh, such... Finally fighting off the blue screen. <laughs> Na nice to meet you both. I'm such... Good to meet you too. Are you from the um, area? I born and raised, not in this area uh, specifically, but uh, you know, been around. Huh. I take it. I'm sorry. Fine with it. it. Pardon? Sorry, I was. It's where East would turn over to Fern and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, Fern, was it?" Oh. Yes, sorry. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. 
I am Garvold. It is a pleasure to be here. Garvold, it's good to meet you. You are such a wonderful group. Aya has said that she has enjoyed her travels with you. I am very excited to get to know all of you and hear about what you have all been up to. Hmm. Good people, and I've enjoyed traveling with them. Good to hear, good to hear. Do you all have already some place to stay for the evening? Uh, yes, uh, but thank you. It is good, wanted to offer no no friends of ours would go uh, cold for a night, hmm? But you'll have to I come. Didn't... Hmm? Uh, we didn't. I didn't want to impose without warning. So I got. Uh, we got us rooms at the Lucky Frog. Ah, oh, good crime. How was crime? Okay. Good. Good. He was very excited to see me. Ah, he is. He is. We all are, of course. How to go? I need to. I need to return the, um, I need to return the encyclopedia I, I borrowed from him. Uh, but that is neither here nor there. So, tell me, how was the trip? You were coming from Camlin. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Not too much difficulty on the road, thankfully. That's always a blessing. Nonce. Uh, they will, between the two of them, ask back and forth um, a few a few questions about general travel stuff, the road, the weather, um, and things about how was Camlin, and and just sort of you know the general sort of chit chat catching up what you do when somebody has been traveling. Um, yeah. For a minute there. Um, is absolutely going to ask if, maybe not tonight, but if at some point she can uh, have permission to, like, dance and show off some things she's figured out. Oh, you know, you're always welcome to dance for us here, Aya. Everybody loves it. We always love to see it. Anais and Sienna have been wanting to dance with you. They were so excited to hear that you were coming by. It's going to be really good to see them. Yes, you'll have to come by for dinner, maybe maybe tomorrow night. You can see, um, not all of them are in town, I'm afraid. And Pierre sort of cuts in like, mm, I, you will have to meet all of my wonderful children. My eldest and my youngest are on a little, you know, girls, girls vacation at the moment, but... You will be able to see see my others, and I am I'm so excited for you all to meet them. I, as Joe, am quickly retrieving the document about the children because I don't remember. <laughs> I can't match names to which ones is which, and that's because I've lost the memory of the document. I can Aww. tell you, you would know their oldest would be Molly, and their youngest would be Addie. Yes. Okay. That sounded right, but I couldn't, like, I knew Addie, but I couldn't remember the name of the oldest. Yeah. Um, so you know that that leaves um, Hamish, who is the second oldest, Odile, um, Anais and Siana, and Bryn. Yes. That's so many kids. <laughs> a lovely cluster of chocolate fuckery to throw these bastards at. I come bearing MILFs and also all of their children. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm losing my come mind. bearing MILFs. <laughs> thank, thank you, PK. This is just what I wanted. My uh, birthday is in for like several more needs. weeks. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to change my name to I come bearing MILFs because I think it's funny. Please, you should. It's very funny. Um, I just changed. Well, we're going to remind us of Um. Hold on. 
I mean, I won't speak for anyone else, but I was very excited to accept the invitation to dinner tomorrow. If it is extended around the table, Victor will also accept. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Suarez had said that you'll have to, you'll have to, you'll all have to come to, to dinner yeah. tomorrow. Sure. That sounds lovely. Um, and it is, I it is absolutely going to get them started on how the kiddos are doing. Oh, you know, Pierre wants know. to talk about her kids. I know. <laughs> um, and I she, know you we know I told you this woman is a swan, but what you also need to understand about her is that she has three great loves in her life, her wife, her kids and her pop. And, Man. and that is all that matters. Um, she, 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 you get her started on the kids, and she is just immediately like, oh, you know, little Bryn, she is always up to trouble, you know, they're always, you know, coming up with new, new mischief to do. The twins encourage them, you know, um, but, but they have been, they have been so, so they, they just came back, actually, as uh, Suarez and, and they were on a visit to the coast. And where it's just yes, they're getting used to the water. I really love it. We're having having some time adjusting. Um but they're taking to it naturally like I thought they would. And and she sort of pauses and then looks at the rest of the table and Joe Joe Tiola And know, know what selkies are. Do I? Uh, yeah, make, do we? Make a... Make a... Knowledge, nature, or arcana. I will say, Victor, I'm almost certain that you do. Danaela, it's less certain. Okay, okay. So you definitely know what a selkie is. My knowledge like Cerise is a selkie. That maybe people didn't know that, but Aya wouldn't think of it as something people don't know. So that was nature or arcana? Yeah. Not, yeah. Okay. Do I? Oh I my would, god. Right? Burn, you would. Bro, that's a 28. Um, yeah, I got <laughs> okay. a 27. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah 29. I, Arcana. I think based on everything I've said, I'm going to just say I don't. <laughs> that is very fair. <laughs> If if you are uh, fern or soot or rolled above like a twelve, um, you know uh, what mm -hmm. selkies are. You when and you would know when I said this woman is a selkie. You'd be like, mm, she's a seal sometimes. And when you look at her, you're a little bit like, yeah, but she probably is a seal sometimes. It's just the vibes, you know. It's the round. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's the round, it's the eyes, it's the, the eyes. it's the, just something about her. You're like that could that that's that's a seal sometimes. Um and so when when she refers to her children taking to the water naturally, you sort of you're like, Well, they're probably a little they're a little bit seal in there, but yeah, she asks you if you know what selkies are. I Well I figured you would, you're sort of from around here. Can't say I've met many, or if I do, oh, I didn't know it. Most people don't. <laughs> I suppose that's the point of it, eh? Ah, sometimes, sometimes it's a little fun to show off, but. <laughs> and I, since Yana, my children, they're sort of learning, learning how to uh, manage it all, being in the water, and uh, they're they're having a good time. They're about thirteen, so it's a, it's an interesting age, but it's going well for them. Soot does get, like, a fond smile on his face. <laughs> There's a couple um, of kids back where I, uh, live. About the same age. Can understand. Ah, it's a fun age. It's been fun for all of them, but it's, it's been... It's particularly fun when there's two at the same time. <laughs> he, he does chuckle at that one. <laughs> yeah. Um... Every word that these women say about their children so far has been so slash affectionate. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's like, have have you? Do you have a minute to talk about um, our joy and delights, our children? Like, any any opportunity you get the sense. Well, uh, anyone who 
is looking at Aya, knows it can tell. She knew what she was doing when she got these women to talk about their children. Yeah. Like, she knew that this was going to be a conversation that would go on for, like, hours if we let it. Yeah. Um, Pierre does continue a little bit. Um, and, and she's like, Odile has been doing very well. She has started growing bonsai trees. She's having a lot of fun with it. She's very fascinated with, with, with the process of the cultivating and the, um, and, and she kind of makes like a motion of like, like trimming with her fingers, like, like scissors, but like, she can't think about the word. Uh, it is very, it is fun for her, I think, to see things that sort of change and move on a very slow time scale. And she's she's having good fun with it. And Hamish, Hamish is is helping her with it. You know, he started he did that a little bit when he was younger, and he's helping her with it now. And it's been very good. Hamish, Hamish is in the back tonight. I think it is a little loud out here to bring him out to meet you all. But tomorrow for dinner, you will meet him. Sounds excellent. Oh, it's a lot to run the front. It's a lot to run the front. Yes, it is just it is just a busier night, and you know when he is um he's he's feeling a more quiet mood tonight, and so he is he is in the back and he's doing a wonderful job, and he's he's very very good at it. Um, this this woman will share anecdotes about her children. Um interspersed with compliments to her wife, who Suarez does have to get up after a few minutes and go back to the to the back of the house. Um, and um, Pierre will chat with you all for a little while, both talking about her own stuff and then sort of continuing to ask you questions about travel, about Santerra, Princess, and Jasper about what you all are up to in general. Hell yeah. General good socialization. Yeah. Good vibes. Yeah. Oh my god, uh, bird. <laughs> I am not telling uh, a, a lot of the dramatic stories. She, she's giving kind of an overview of some of the stories, like some of them she's avoiding, and she's not going into full details because one certainly is a better storyteller, and two, that's not a thing for public. That's a that, those <laughs> stories can be had in private among friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you do prod him a bit, he will tell stories um, a little bit, or at least he'll beef up a little bit of what we've gone through because it's fun. Um, Uh, the, the thing is, as soon as you're like, I can do a little storytelling, um, Pierre is like, yes, absolutely, ready to sit in Raptured. You could, you could tell stories she's heard a hundred times and she would still be like, yes. Um, and indeed the vibe of the pub is such that like... If you start telling stories, you're bound to get a little bit of an audience. Um, Hell yeah. Um, and so it, it can turn overall into quite a sociable night. Um, if I wants to do the, uh, the dancing and, and uh, whatever yeah, routine, I, I sit, that's sit with mine. Like, start twirling it up with a couple of stories and then uh, start doing the collaborative thing. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Make make a couple performance checks for me, you two. Hell yeah. Um you like uh, my storytelling yeah. is Also, much. hi, I have opened up my laptop as well. Um let's go Proud of you. Op- my opal case. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? What have you got? Um what is that? A thirty? Yeah, it's a straight thirty. <laughs> I rolled a tw- what is that an eight yeah an eighteen and then I have a plus twelve. <laughs> Did you add plus two for collaborating with Aya? Oh God no! So thirty two. <laughs> thirty two. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ah, uh. uh, thirty eight. <laughs> win the squad. Am I right? Oh, oh my God. God. Vibes are right. 
Yeah. It's it's a combination of the good environment, the finally being off the road, having good food um, and drink if you want it, um, and a responsive audience, and just so you feel more at home at the moment than you have in a long time by way of proximity. Like you know, if you start telling a certain kind of stories, these are all the people who know this genre well, um, mm-hmm. and and will will respond well to it. Um, And, like, no, you're not quite close to home. You're still a fair ways away from home, really, like, geographically speaking, but you're... You're just... I'm not really close to home. You're... The vibe is right, Um, and Aya, at some point, something says just gives you that itch, and you feel like you want to... You want to move about it. Um, And there's... There's space available, and you can sort of flit your way in and out of tables, and and dance. And the audience is appreciative of of both of your performances. Um, to the women lovers in the crowd, Aya looks amazing as per yeah. usual. Um, Suarez comes out a little bit to watch you for a short while. Um, Pierre stays out as long as she can. She's more front of house, so she, she even if she goes back behind the bar, she's always watching and appreciating. And and you guys get a good audience response. And I'll even I'll even roll. You guys can get some some gold um, because you hit the bracket. Yeah. Um, yeah. This one I, <laughs> is very much keeping her feet firmly on the ground. Like she's doing very the the very I am very athletic, but she's not using the air walk to pizzazz it up. Mm-hmm. She's using like she she is keeping within the limits of sort of because she while she does want to show Pierre and Cerise that she figured out flying it that she figured out how to move on the air again mm-hmm. she wants to um the, she wants that reveal to be where we can sort of talk about it afterwards. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So does yeah, for sure it's... using ghost sound during this to make some cool little effects. <laughs> yeah. They, they got so into it. Yeah. It's it's a really it's a good evening. Um and I think we will close with that evening and then we can have um, more talk alone time and, and dinner and meeting the broader family of the child time, child time, <laughs> the, the uh, fucking Karpakova Mokane family. But you all have a very good time. Or if not good, at least a time where you can take your mind off some things and enjoy the company and the energy. Heck yeah. Um, and the women, so... And the women. Woo! <laughs> and the women. So that's, that's where we will call it, because it's like 11, and this is what I normally call it, and I don't want to get into the next stage of Torcolonia, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh.